Welcome back to The Big Picture. We're talking with Paul Peck about sports in Western New York. Let's get right back into it. Everything is related. If it, the, the NFL makes most of its money on TV broadcasts. So financially, as long as the TV networks maintain their contracts with the NFL, uh, the, the revenues are still going to be there for the NFL. The, the, they may take a hit with attendance, uh, but the majority of the, of the money that the NFL gets comes from the networks and the network contracts. But if you don't have fans in the stands, depending on how that works, if there's empty stadiums or if there's small crowds, part of the excitement of football is that crowd noise, is that, that energy in the stadium, you know, the excitement, the electric feeling that you get at the Bills game or when you're in Kansas City or these stadiums where the, where the crowds in New Orleans where the crowds get, get so enthused and so it's almost like their players in the game you know their mood kind of translates to the people at home who are watching and without that I don't know whether the experience of watching football for a good segment of the audience will just just not be as compelling and the ratings will go down and it'll have a ripple effect in, in the, the whole industry. Well, I mean, it, it's just so different than anything we're used to. And as you said, that's what makes the NFL great. That's what makes particularly us here uh, in Buffalo. It, it, is, it is an experience to be at that stadium and feel that energy. And, you know, and just compare it, Phil, to hockey. Uh, you know, everything that you said about the NFL is true. It's exactly the opposite when it comes to hockey. Hockey does not generate most of its revenues from its television. It needs people in the stands in order to make money. So how would that work for another professional sport um, you know that obviously here in our town is just as important um, this is going to be very interesting you're right NFL probably could survive as a studio show so to speak we can still play fantasy football you can still bet on the games uh, you know you can still watch the games um, all of that experience will essentially be the same um, you know the games will be odd to watch if there aren't people in the stands um, but the NFL is such a behemoth uh, you know that it would it would work about the other sports I don't know about about college athletics which are uh, you know which are particularly at the highest levels down south are much more dependent on a hundred thousand people in a stadium um, in addition to their TV contracts where's that going to go I don't know even if we get to the point where you can open this up and we can play sports again um, all it takes is one guy on one team uh, to get sick again um, now that changes the dynamic. What happens if one bill uh, gets sick and the bills can't play for two weeks because they're quarantined? Well, what does that do to your schedule and to your season? And if the team doesn't have anyone sick or, you know, I mean, again, you know, these are all questions that are being asked, being asked right now with no real answers. And I think it's all going to factor in to the decision of whether sports, particularly football, can start in the fall or not. What about at the younger level? You know, the, the school kids uh, that, that look forward to playing uh, sports, to getting their start, you know, in the high school uh, sports, in the little league sports. How is this going to affect that? I mean, it's got to be tough for young kids to get involved in sports now more than ever. I mean, there's now a, a tendency for younger kids to migrate over to electronics and even the esports, uh, and away from the physical world of athletics, it, I I have a feeling and a fear that this might kind of drain the the talent pool going forward uh, for who knows how long. Yeah, I think that's you know one of those things as you start to look down the road and and see what the after effects of all this are going to be is is you bring up a good point. You know, I mean. Um, you know, you want we work hard to get kids to be involved in sports because it's a way to keep them occupied and busy and not uh, playing video games or whatever. And frankly, that's been in the mode that we've been in the last two months here. Is it can we just flip the switch and get everybody back to normal again? Team settings, athletic events, you know, uh, you know, small, minor in the big picture of what everyone is going through right now. But but important, an important part of our culture. And you saw how many people watched the NFL draft because they were just desperate to watch something 
that, that was new and fresh and uh, you know even enjoyed watching all these old games but after a while you want to you want to see something new and and uh, uh, th that's where I think sports is important in our society and important from the professional level to college to the level that you're talking about and yeah I, I would I would suspect a lot of people are concerned um, that this that it may hurt um, getting kids active and getting them involved in sports after something like this uh, it'll be just another one of those challenges it's going to be quite the puzzle for for people who are especially concerned with a healthy lifestyle because obviously we want to encourage people to get out and be physically active and and sports is a great way to get your 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 young ones active and in good physical shape and to learn how to take care of their bodies and and respect their bodies and and you know, make, make sure that they have proper nutrition and proper conditioning and so on. And yet, the people who want to promote a, a healthy lifestyle have to be concerned about the social distancing and sure. the, that portion of it. So it, you, it, there's really a balance there. And again, it's, it's uncharted territory. It's going to be quite the, the conundrum, <laughs> if you will. Uh, it's, it, it's been it's been interesting to see people being very creative with home workouts and and uh, you know the ability to get out and find things that they can do uh, you know hit a tennis ball around uh, you know I did that with uh, my daughter and my wife a couple weeks ago and that seemed to be sufficient enough distance to be able to do something active and a lot of people are walking and jogging and just being creative and I think that's what's cool about us as Americans and as people is that we'll figure out a way uh, to do it you know if it's uh, running around lifting water jugs and to replace the weights that everybody's used to lifting well you, you can make it work and and the the in-home workouts off of YouTube and off of videos have been pretty cool so uh, you know uh, we're, we, we, we're an adaptable society and I think in some ways we've seen that at its best we're, we're almost out of time but I wanted to t go back to, <clears throat> to UB for a second um, you know, obviously a big part of uh, what we hear about UB is their athletic program, you know, their football in, in, the, in the fall, basketball. How is this going to affect that their programs, uh, you know, all the colleges to a certain extent, but you're uh, connected with UB. Uh, what's the word, in, you know, with going forward, how are they kind of maneuvering the situation? Uh, how is it going to affect the programs? Well, the, the challenges are very similar, Phil, to what they are at the professional level. Where it's different at a college level is, is the, the consensus is no athletics are going to begin at the college level until the campuses open. Um, they, the campuses need to go back to regular students on campus uh, for the fall semester before, I believe, any athletics. Or You're not going to see a football team come back if the campus isn't open. Um, you know, the colleges were some of the very first places to decide to shut things down, being very progressive. Uh, does that mean they may be a little more hesitant to open up? Uh, first to shut down, maybe last to open? That may have an effect. Uh, on things, um, you know, um, such a big part of college athletics revenue comes from football and if football is affected that affects all the other sports at UB and at any college campus and, uh, uh, you know, I mean, even though the younger demographic hasn't necessarily been as affected by the coronavirus as some of the others, uh, you know, there, there's still, a, you know, professors and people that work on campuses, those are all considerations. And uh, it, college would be very interesting. I think it's a much different dynamic. The pros obviously can, can make their own rules and do what they want to do. The colleges are going to be at the whim of the school presidents and the, you know, the SUNY system. I mean, you're, you're not going to be able to open up UB if you're not likely going to open up Stony Brook down on Long Island and some of the other ones. So, you know, UB will, will be affected likely by the entire state unless they decide to parse it um, by different regions. So um, that's where the college thing is going to be very different. You know, even if UB starts late and misses, they're supposed to play at Ohio State uh, in, in September uh, of this year. If that game doesn't happen, that's a significant financial boost to the athletic department that will go away. So these are all things that are, that are impacted college-wise at a place like UB and some of their other uh, universities that are a little bit different than the pro sports part. Right. You know, the, the powers that be at, at those 
programs have to be concerned for not liability so much, but really the health. It's their responsibility to preserve the health of their students. So uh, that's a responsibility they can't take lightly. And, and they have to bear that in mind. They don't want athletes to come in circumstances where they may become sick. And so that's a, a serious consideration. You, you weigh that and then the, the financial impact on the school, the schedule. Uh, I know programs, especially football, they start in midsummer with their, their training. Uh, even in, uh, on the high school level, you know, my boys were in high school football and they started in, in early July uh, with workouts and, and practices. If they can't go to practices in the summer on schedule, then that's gonna take the fall and, and, and the schedule for games in the fall and put it in jeopardy. Is, there a deadline where they may just call off the fall season? You know, I don't know. I, I think that's obviously the last thing that anybody wants to do, but there have been some <laughs> ideas floated about potentially playing the college football season from March <laughs> till, uh, you know, May. Uh, that, that idea has been thrown out there. Uh, you know, maybe it's doesn't, if, if you can't delay it until October, then, then, you know, you, you don't, I, I don't think anybody wants to cancel it, particularly at the highest levels, the Alabamas and the Ohio States, there's too much money on the line. So maybe potentially a solution could be starting football in, in uh, February and March and playing March, April and May um, and having bowl games be somewhere, you know, around the early summer part at, at this point, everyone is trying to be creative, and I think everyone is is uh, is ultimately up for any solution um, that can be reached right now. You've seen the NFL talk about delaying the season and pushing the Super Bowl back. Um, I, I think at this point, without anybody having any kind of a definitive roadmap, everyone's just uh, coming up with plans A through Z. Yeah, well, we're you know we're just about out of time, Paul. I'd, I'd like to you know suggest that everybody who's interested in the sports scene at all, go to your website, which is buffalosportspage.com, and uh, you know, keep up on, on everything that's happening. You know, the, the Beat the Champ, you know, we're going to start that up again as soon as practical, but I, we're gonna really entertain people with those exciting 300 bowling games that we're gonna be showing. And going forward, Beat the Champ is, is still gonna be around, still going to be interesting we're going to get through this and um, the bowlers of western new york still have a place to go to watch you guys you know do your thing i saw some uh, bowling alleys in some southern states maybe opening up so if you want a road trip uh, beat the champ on the road uh, <laughs> i might be up for that phil hey i'm i'm all in well, it's just like the old days we'll go on a, on a road trip and, and I'll, I'll have the camera <laughs> there you go Okay, so we're, we're out of time now on this big picture, but I want to thank you, Paul, for being my guest. I want to thank all of you for watching this big picture. I want to encourage you to watch Beat the Champ because it is the best, best show for bowlers in Western New York, and it's still going to be interesting throughout this entire coronavirus situation. We'll keep you informed about the big picture going forward, and we'll have Paul back again to talk about the sports situation in Western New York. Again, Paul's website is buffalosportspage.com, and that'll keep you up on everything that's going on in Buffalo and Western New York sports-wise. It's a great website. It'll tell you everything you need to know. I want to thank Paul for being my guest on this big picture. I want to thank you for watching the big picture. And as always, I want to thank you for watching WBBZ-TV and Beat the Champ. We'll see you next time.